you state your name for the record, please? It's your affection can feel your with me. Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. Oh my goodness. We have some shiznit to discuss, and it's all about the psychology of being Gypsy Rose Blanchard after being rescued from her mother's invisible prison and having to navigate life inside of a real prison system. We're here tonight to discuss what was going on with Gypsy Rose while she served her prison sentence. I want to share something with you, but I've really struggled with how to bring this information to my channel because ultimately I want to make my opinions clear. I believe that Gypsy Rose Blanchard is a victim of long and sustained terrible abuse, the likes of which most of us will never see again in another case. And after checking in with a friend who's a child psychiatrist, I've been reassured that behavior such as attention seeking, lying, and trust issues, they tend to run rampant in abuse victims like Gypsy. So later in the week, when I go forward with reviewing Gypsy's interrogation tapes, we're going to see a lot of those behaviors. And it's not unusual that someone who's dealt with the things Gypsy has dealt with would have these kinds of issues and even potentially disorders created and passed down due to the abuse she suffered as a child. It's normal for kids who've been indoctrinated or even brainwashed through emotional and physical abuse to really struggle with their interpersonal relationships. And the story I'm about to tell you here today is fraught. With behaviors from Gypsy, many may feel dismayed by, but for me, I cannot be surprised that Gypsy, a girl who was imprisoned, manipulated, and used since birth, would struggle with trying to find her footing outside of her mother's prison walls. Gypsy seems happy and excited now about her freedom, and I continue to believe she deserves every ounce of that freedom. I hope Gypsy's future is full of positive experiences to make up for a lifetime of abuse. Let's head down this rabbit hole together, friends. So, a few days ago, a young man contacted me about his ongoing friendship with Gypsy while she was in prison. He was able to provide proof of his interactions with Gypsy, and for the sake of this story, we will call him Eddie. Right up front, Eddie lets me know that he has autism. He's honest to a T. He's exact and seemingly forthright in all of his interactions with me from the start. He breaks down and gives me every tiny detail of the past couple of years interacting with Gypsy, and a group of her friends. This group happens to include a woman named Rachel Garlic. Rachel has gained substantial fame on TikTok with her videos about her relationship with Gypsy. So I keep getting asked how I know Gypsy. We were in the same county jail together in Springfield and I had read about her in the paper and we just so happened to be on the same prison bus together. And I told her I, I wasn't right that I knew who she was and that she didn't know who I was. So she offered, kind of like in Forrest Gump, she's like, you can sit here if you want to. Originally, she was incarcerated with Gypsy, and allegedly they became close friends. 
So we rode together to prison, and um, I got car sick, so she offered me her shoulder, so I slept on her shoulder, and then we spent, like, the next five months just getting to know each other, and we just kept in contact. I named my daughter after her. Um, she, My brother was murdered a month before I got out, and if I wouldn't have had my friend, I probably wouldn't have came out a better person. Um, she encouraged me to do better, and... That's kind of how we know each other. Once Garlic was released, she continued that friendship in the form of making videos about Gypsy and amassing a group of friends who wanted to be close to Gypsy while she was in prison. Back to Eddie. Eddie admined a Facebook group dedicated to true crime, and he was a huge supporter of Gypsy Rose. When Garlic approached him and let him know that Gypsy would be interested in talking to Eddie via the prison phone system. You see, Eddie had a very special gift for Gypsy, and Garlic was interested in helping Eddie deliver this gift to Gypsy. Once the gift was received, Eddie received his first phone call from prison, and it was Gypsy Rose Blanchard. It turns out, friends, there was a group of individuals contacting and chatting with Gypsy while she served her term, and many of them were going through Rachel Garlic to meet her. This isn't abnormal for any inmate. And it sounds like Rachel Garlic was very interested in helping to facilitate all of these relationships for Gypsy. Hey guys, so here's story time finally. Sorry, I've been busy working. Um, but this is how I got to get close to Gypsy. So I've been interested in her since the beginning and I watched all the documentaries and all that. And then the, I found Rachel Garlic and because she was in a gypsy group on facebook and then she made her own because she's the real deal and she was actually in prison with gypsy and her and i got really close me and rachel and i started emailing gypsy and rachel figured her and i would get along very well so she kind of you know hooked us up <laughs> Um, but yeah, then me and Gypsy started talking, and we have a lot of the same interests, and music, and all that. And we're both just very unique people, so we gelled really well. And she ended up calling me, and I was nervous, because I was like, oh my god, I finally get to talk to her. But yeah, her and I have developed a really close bond and I finally got to meet her three or four weeks ago and yeah she's really she has a really funny personality like she's goofy and she's really sweet and she has no filter guys she says what's on her mind and that's that um and no guys there's no meet and greets in prison you can't do that that would kind of uh, defeat the whole purpose of prison and please don't flood her mail but meanwhile, Garlic's TikTok account was growing and exploding. I can't help but notice potential financial gains in Rachel's lifestyle through the evolution of her TikTok during this time period. So I have an email here that Gypsy wants me to read. Um, bear with me, I'm not a very good reader. <laughs> Goes, Rachel. If you want to read this on your video, or if you wanted to share it for any reason to show I have your back, I'm sending you this copy of an email. Before I read it, I just want to let you know that I'm not actually going to say the names so I don't get reported for bullying or something like that. So this morning, I was interviewed by a lead institutional investigator about a re report made by T to the facility's main office. T made a report about my friend Rachel posting TikTok videos about me as well as Rachel having a support group for me. 
Right. So in the background, there was some trouble in paradise because Gypsy was being questioned by more than just the prison system about what she was doing with this person, Rachel Garlic, and her social media. Was she a part of it? Was she benefiting from it? And, you know, Gypsy had to be very careful about getting involved with things like this. And it's here that I just want to point out, you may notice that garlic looks very different in many different TikTok videos. And one of the reasons why that is occurring, and you can look over it if you head over to TikTok yourself, is because during the time that she had created and run this wildly popular TikTok account. Well, there's this one, but there's also a second one about Gypsy we're going to talk about. During the time that she had run whatever account she had about Gypsy on TikTok, she ended up um, having a couple of surgeries done. One was bariatric surgery, and the others appear to be cosmetic in nature. Yes, and I am curious about where the money came from to help support Rachel during these surgeries, but I digress. Yeah, I'll do me a favor and uh, don't ask about Gypsy anymore. Okay, just don't. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I don't want to talk about her anymore. Now, we know that Gypsy was banned from making any financial gain off of her crimes during her incarceration. It's only now that she can begin to earn money off of talking about her life story. So according to Eddie, he wants me to know that Gypsy was a really kind and good friend to him. She would call him on holidays and always cheered him on over the phone. Eddie really saw this as a special kind of relationship in his life. Now he was married, so he makes it clear that this wasn't anything romantic, but he did feel like Gypsy was one of the only people in his life who could understand his own history of abuse. Meanwhile, Rachel Garlic created a secondary TikTok account, which she entitled Soul Sisters. If you're a big fan of the act, then you're going to love this. I found the actual Gypsy Roses TikTok account. It's currently run by Gypsy Roses friend Rachel, because as we all know, Gypsy Rose is still in prison. Rachel has complete contact with Gypsy, and they do Q&As and fun stuff like that all the time. Follow to keep up with Gypsy Rose. And this account allegedly started requesting or asking for money for people to ask questions of Gypsy in prison. She's not talking to that person any longer, and um, she don't appreciate him posting her emails. That's private emails. Um, Gypsy gets swamped with letters and emails, and if you're lucky to be chosen and you break her trust, she's not going to write you back. Um, you know, she's very kind and loving. And at this point, Gypsy was in a new and blossoming relationship with one of her prison boyfriends. Eddie shares that Gypsy often spoke to him about this boyfriend. Eddie wanted it to be the best possible outcome for Gypsy. I really get the sense that Eddie wanted Gypsy to flourish, to get out and to flourish once she had her freedom. Gypsy even promised him she would be able to visit him after her release, and he was looking forward to that. But then, suddenly, things started changing big time with Gypsy's relationships to people in this group that was revolving around Rachel Garlic. Why? And then there's people saying that she only writes you back if you send her money. That's not true. Why why send her money? Why why would you want to make her feel obligated to write you back? Would you stop it, you little stinker? Okay. From what I can figure out, it looks like Rachel Garlic was being called out by many for the money she was making on Gypsy's name and story. And people were starting to ask where that money was going to. I have big news for you guys. I have talked to Gypsy. She's called me twice this week. 
Gypsy cried and allegedly confided in Eddie about her fears and frustrations regarding Rachel. Because according to Eddie, things were not working out with this new boyfriend. The boyfriend found out that Gypsy was working with Rachel on this TikTok and he wasn't happy about this situation. He was angry at Gypsy. For whatever reason, he felt like this wasn't going to work out. So I turned on my Q&As, but I've been getting a lot of questions about Gypsy and um, she doesn't want me to do a bunch of um, question videos about her um, like we used to do because it was really intrusive and stuff. So if you have a question, I'd be happy to answer it. But And Gypsy told Eddie, he even said, I told you not to get involved with those people. Gypsy's relationship with this boyfriend ended. But it was Rachel who took the heat. She was called out publicly for making money off of Gypsy's fans, while Gypsy denied involvement. And Rachel ended up canceling the second account, Soul Sisters, eventually. So I have big news for you guys. I have talked to Gypsy. She's called me twice this week. Did you talk to Aunt Gypsy? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Did she say she loved you? Yeah. Yeah. She can't wait to see you in December? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, this is her TikTok. So y'all need to go follow it now. Um, that is her for real TikTok. And so um, let's get her a good following before she gets out because she should be making lots of videos. Also, I am going to be there the day she gets out. I held that secret for two years, you guys, on the day. Times were hard in the Gypsy community, and Eddie states his relationship with Gypsy disintegrated before his very eyes. Eddie has a lot of trouble letting go. It's obvious in his conversations with me, which include a lot of tears, that he misses his interactions with Gypsy on the phone and feels devastated that she no longer contacts him. And he says that he's watched so many of the relationships Gypsy had with people who were involved with Rachel Garlic completely disintegrate, including his own relationship. Eddie even told me that Christy, Rachel's stepmom, has separated herself from all of these players who she used to seemingly support and care about while Gypsy was in prison. Eddie is left wondering how this all fell apart and how he can move on and let it go. Meanwhile, Rachel Garlett continues to post sad updates on her own relationship with Gypsy on her TikTok because it seems like Gypsy has left Rachel behind as well. Asking if I'm going to get to see Gypsy tomorrow whenever she gets out. I cannot. I spent two days in the hospital and got two blood transfusions, so. Okay, everybody. I'm getting a thousand messages and everything about Gypsy. So the truth is, when she called a couple months ago, we totally worked things out. She invited me to her party, and then two days later, she uninvited me. I don't know why. I don't know what I did. And... I'm just in the dark as everybody else, but I'm praying and hoping that she gives us time because I felt like I've done nothing but support her and love her even whenever I was not feeling like things were fair to me. But I can put all that aside because that's third party opinions and I think that's why this is happening. So. Please stop asking me about her. And if you follow me just because of her, please just go follow her. I'd rather have my own followers, okay? I don't know what's happening. I just don't. And it's not her fault, I don't think. But in time, maybe she will reach out. Until then, I'm just going to have to respect what she's going through right now and it's hard and it's heartbreaking for me but I love her enough to let me go right now if that's what she needs to do 
Rachel has been required to take down her second account, and she's even said on her primary account she's not going to talk about Gypsy any longer, and people should only stay subscribed if they want to hear about her own journey in life. For me, I'm really left questioning who surrounding Gypsy has her best interests at heart. Gypsy's situation requires ongoing support and care, so she doesn't wind up making some really sad mistakes she may regret later. Okay, all right, this may all sound like a lot of middle school BS, but my point to going down this rabbit hole and talking about it here on my channel is to ask the question, where is the professional team who should be working with and supporting Gypsy Rose Blanchard? I mean, so far, we've got a woman named Fancy, Katie Joy Paulson, and now Rachel Garlic messing with this horribly abused girl who just got out of prison. Where is her PR network? And someone with some level of competence to guide the family and Gypsy in a way that doesn't include all this enmeshment with people who are just playing games. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm totally shocked to find out all of this has been going on throughout her prison term. And that stuff apparently continues <laughs> to be happening as we've seen a lot of crazy things in my last video going on with creators on YouTube. I'm really curious where all of this is going to lead, and I'm scared that it's not going to lead to the best outcome for Gypsy's mental health. Hopefully, I'm wrong, and there are wonderful support systems in place. Her parents feel like they have tools they need to be the best possible parents they can at this point in time. And that Gypsy's husband is in a place where he feels he can protect and be a safe place for Gypsy. But for some reason, all this past evidence makes me think that there's a lot of bullshit going on in Gypsy Rose Blanchard's life. Wow, this has been a crazy and never-ending rabbit hole, and I think there's a lot more here. I'm just not willing to go any farther with it. Like, what happened with all the money Rachel made on her TikTok account? I'd like to know. But, as I've said before, all I want is an opportunity for Gypsy to live, grow, and be free. My next videos are going to be focusing on Nicholas Godijan. I hope that you'll join me actually on another YouTube channel entitled Uncork. This creator has met Nicholas's family and also met with Nick. She appears very knowledgeable about everything that happened in his court case, and I am looking forward to attending her live tomorrow, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I hope that you'll see me there, and if not, just hop on over and check out Uncorked and subscribe, because I'll be over there from time to time. Thank you so much for coming with me down this rabbit hole of insanity, and I hope you'll join me again next time.